boss of Greyhound Racing New South Wales. Tony Mestroff is here with us at DAPDO tonight. And Tony, again, we were talking about uh, races going to provincial areas and that. We just announced uh, last week uh, the world's richest middle distance race, $125,000 to the winner. It will be staged at Dubbo initially. Yeah, what a great result. It's good to get out to the regions, as I said, but more distance dogs. I mean, we've uh, obviously got a lot of feedback from participants and they want those distance dogs to race for higher prize money. So we've done that. Also, we've got a large announcement tomorrow, the world's richest race in its category. Um, I don't want to... Same I think you just did. <laughs> no, you didn't, I didn't give yourself away. No, yeah. you didn't. But, uh, so it's a distance between, say, zero and <laughs> 1,000 metres. Uh, I don't want to uh, say it anymore. But, look, I think it's important that we provide, you know, good prize money for participants and for distance dogs. And that's what the participants have been crying out for. And great announcement tomorrow, but also the middle distance starting um, here, which is a, a great result for participants. And next year, of course, 2022, unfortunately due to COVID in 2021, we weren't able to have the, the million dollar chase again. Greyhound Racing New South Wales, dug deep. They haven't said we're going to keep the money. We're going to put it up. We've got two runnings next year. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Um, one in May, one in September. It's going to be a massive year as well as the announcement tomorrow in June. So what a year and what a great year for participants, punters and for Greyhound Racing New South Wales. And we're... We're going really well at the moment as a business, but it's good to see the return going back to the industry. And, and, and Tony, not only these big money uh, races, it's uh, record prize money across all yeah. grades uh, for the, the, this financial year. So it's not yeah. just, you're not just concentrating on the big group ones or the million dollar no. chases, spreading it right across. We've got to keep people in the industry. That's what the, keeps the industry going. People tonight, that previous race, Andrew mm. Bell, he's got hundreds of dogs. Those people keep this industry going, and we need to be loyal to them. So it's not about the big races. We cater for a small proportion, but it's life-changing for a person. We saw Frank Hurst, and I know at the awards night, Frank said to me, you changed my life. So that's what it is. It's life-changing for these people, which is amazing. And he's a very, very hard man, Frank Hurst. <laughs> hey. Grandful boy. Yeah, i tell you what, that night at the Greyhound yeah. of the Year, he was tearing up, and it took a lot. It meant a hell of a lot to him. Yeah, it, we want to change people's lives, and yeah. that's what we're doing. But at the same time, they've got to make a living, and yeah, that's and, what it's all yeah. about. And ownership is is obviously a strategy that is high on our on our radar. Uh, we need to, uh, you know, bring new people into the sport. And and I was talking to Wayne Billet before our chief operations officer. And, and when you look at the amount of dogs we breed in New South Wales, the odds, if you had to bought a, a New South Wales bred pup in 2018, Battler, you had a one in 177 chance of owning a Group One winner. Yeah, it's quite, quite a remarkable statue, and it's, there is no better time in the history of the sport to be an owner, to get involved, and it's harder to actually buy race dogs now because no one wants to sell them because no. they know the prize money is so good, and if you are, if you're going to put the money, uh, your hand in the kick to buy a race dog, you've got to pay big money because they know they can continue to race beyond four years in Masters and there's still great prize money out for grabs. Exactly. We've got some plans next year for an ownership model and we want to bring new people into the sport, as you said. We want to bring younger people into mm. the sport, younger trainers, younger owners, um, and we're going to do that. We've got a, been working with Wayne. Um, we've got a great initiative that will bring new people into the industry. So look out for that, Mark. And, and again, Tone, it's not just about racing uh, because, again, we, we need to make sure that these greyhounds, which... You know, the owners and the trainers, they absolutely love. It's not just about racing. We can't, cannot stress this enough. The welfare, the, the strategies that, you know, Greyhound Racing New South Wales yep. have put in place in the last couple of years have been significant. Tell us about some of the big purchases as far as properties are concerned and what, you know, what the strategies are moving forward to provide our racing greyhounds with a life after they've finished their career on the track. Yeah, of course, welfare's at the forefront of everything we do. I've said that from day one, and we've purchased now a new gap facility out at Richmond, which we really look forward to. We've also bought a property in the Hunter Valley, um, a farm stay where dogs will stay forever. And they'll make a home after they finish racing. They'll chill out for a while, and if they can't bring a home, they'll live there for their life. So that's an absolute change. There's no jurisdiction in the world that's doing that in greyhound racing or any other racing that I know of. So it's an exciting a couple of initiatives, but... It shows we're willing to invest in welfare. And also, it's about willing, it's about investing, sorry, in participants, but welfare is everything. And the industry wouldn't be here if we didn't have the welfare issue. So they're very strong. And Tony, without welfare being at the top of the list, there is no racing. No, there's no racing. And look, as you said, Mark, the participants 
love their dogs. But they need Greyhound Racing New South Wales to lead them in the right direction. Once again, we've got an announcement in February, which is a great initiative around looking after dogs. Um, and we won't stop doing that. And you have to do that. Mm. Look, we've set a standard and we're going to stay there. All right, new Greyhound Racing New South Wales, the world's richest sprint race, the middle distance, uh, the uh, million dollar chase, I should say. The world's richest middle distance race, $125,000 to the winner. A massive announcement tomorrow. And then we've probably got another big announcement in January as well, Tone. So, I mean, the home of the richest races in the world will be Greyhound Racing New South Wales. Yeah, look, we want to provide New South Wales participants of the best. And as Tim said, we also want to provide for those dogs that aren't up to that level as well every week. I think it's important that we balance it out, but... We've got some exciting announcements oh, coming up. <laughs> Smile. He's got the grin on him like a Cheshire cat. Tony Mestroff, thank you very much, mate. Thanks, Appreciate you. it. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate.